Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. If this is your first time visiting the channel, welcome, we're excited to have you. If you've been here before, welcome back. The match function is great at returning the first instance of a matching value. If you're using Excel 365 or Excel 2021, you have access to XMatch, which can return the first or last matching value. What if you wanna return a specific instance of a matching value like the third matching value or the fourth? Well, I'm glad we found each other because that's exactly what we're gonna do in this video. You could say it's a match made in Excel heaven. Let's get started. Our data set consists of sales data in an Excel table. Our goal is to build an equation flexible enough to return the purchase date for any specific instance of a given customer ID. That is, the date that corresponds to the next to last instance of a given ID, or the second entry, or whichever one you want. If your goal is simply to return the purchase date tied to the first instance of a customer ID, you could use the match function. Similarly, if you need the date corresponding to the last instance of a given ID, and you're running Excel 365 or Excel 2021, you could use the XMatch function. However, our goal is not that simple. We want to return the purchase date corresponding to any specific instance of a given customer ID. We'll start the example by searching for the next to last purchase date corresponding to customer ID 10600, which I've entered in cell H2. I've gone ahead and highlighted all instances of customer ID 10600 to make the example easier to follow. To accomplish our goal of returning the purchase date for a specific instance of the customer ID, we'll build an equation pairing the index function with the large function in place of where the match function usually goes. We'll start with the large function, then come back and add the index function. In cell H3, start by typing an equal sign, the function name large, and an open parentheses. The first parameter of large is the array from which we want to return our value. In this solution, the array will be the row numbers of the table tied to the customer ID 10600. To get only the row numbers tied to a specific customer ID, we'll use the if function. After the opening parentheses of large, type if followed by an open parentheses. For the logical test, we want to see which customer IDs are equal to the value set in cell H2. Start by selecting all of the data within the customer ID column, typing an equal sign, and then selecting cell H2. After selecting cell H2, type a comma to set what we want when this comparison returns true. That is, when the value in the customer ID column equals 10600. We want to return the row numbers corresponding to this customer ID, so we'll use the row function. After typing the function name row, type in open parentheses, followed by selecting the data in the customer ID column. That's all we need for the row function, so we're good typing a closing parentheses. If our data started in row one, we'd be good to go. However, since our data begins in a different row, we need to offset the row numbers to ensure that the index function returns the correct result. For example, as is, the first instance of customer ID 10600 occurs in row seven of the overall spreadsheet. However, this is actually row five of our data. When we get to adding the index function, we'll want to reference the rows relative to our data set as opposed to the absolute location within the overall spreadsheet. All that to say, we simply need to subtract the row number corresponding to our header row from all of our row values. Start by typing a minus sign, the function name row, and an open parentheses. Next, select the customer ID header cell, which is cell C2. After selecting cell C2, type a closing parentheses. It doesn't really matter which header cell you select since we only care about the row number, but I went with customer ID to keep it consistent with the rest of the if function. We could have just hard-coded the number two instead of using the row function, but the equation would break if the header row location moves, which is why we grabbed this number programmatically. Plus, the word programmatically just makes this sound cool. For the large function to work properly, we want the if function to simply return the word false for any customer IDs that are not equal to 10600. This is the default behavior of the if function, so we can skip the third parameter by entering a closing parentheses. Type a comma to go to the second parameter of the large function. This parameter tells large which nth largest value to return. The number one would return the largest value, the number two the second largest, and so on. Let's return the largest value by typing the number one followed by a closing parentheses and then pressing enter. If we wanted the second to last instance of the customer ID 10600, we just replace the one with a two. To understand what's going on, the if function in the first parameter returns the row numbers that correspond to the customer IDs equal to 10600 less the header row number. For the other customer IDs, it returns false. Since large ignores the falses, we end up feeding the function the values 5, 11, 19, and 20. A k value of one tells large to return the largest value, which in this example is 20. This is the relative row containing the last instance of customer ID 10600. A value of two, as we see here, returns the second largest row from that array, which is the next to last instance of this customer ID. 
Our goal was to return the purchase date corresponding to a specific instance of a given customer ID. To accomplish this, we simply need to wrap this large equation inside the index function. In cell H3, place the cursor immediately after the equal sign and type the function name index followed by an open parentheses. The first parameter of index is the range from where we want to return a value corresponding to a location provided in the second parameter. Our goal is to return purchase date, so we'll select the purchase date data. Type a comma to go to the second parameter. This parameter tells index the location of the value we want returned. This is the value we set in the large function, which means we're good placing the cursor at the end of the equation and typing a closing parenthesis, and then pressing enter. Select cell H3 and then select the format dropdown. From here, select short date or long date, whichever is calling to you. There we go. The equation returns May 4th, which corresponds to the next to last or second largest instance of our customer ID. Happy Star Wars Day to customer ID 10600. If you're getting value from this video, that's awesome. Let us know by pressing the like and subscribe buttons. And make sure your mouse still works while also helping out the channel, which is greatly appreciated. The equation we built using large returns a specific instance of a customer ID starting from the last occurrence. If we wanted to go the other direction, say the first instance or second instance, we can instead use the small function. The second parameter of large tells the function which value it should return working backwards from the largest value. The second parameter of small goes in the opposite direction. That is, the higher the k value, the higher the instance returned. For example, a k value of 2 in the small function would return the second smallest value in the first parameter. A value of 3 would return the third smallest value. Let's see this in practice. Start by copying the equation in cell H3. Make sure to copy the equation from the formula bar to keep the references intact. With the equation copied, paste it into cell H4. Great! All we need to do is replace the word large with the function name small and press enter. Let's again update the formatting. In the first equation, the one built with large, a value of 2 returns May 4th as that ties to the second highest row number with customer ID 10600. The value of 2 in the small equation returns May 3rd, which goes with the second smallest row value tied to the same customer ID. If we set the k value of small to 1, this equation would function exactly the same as match by returning the purchase date tied to the first instance of customer ID 10600. If we set the k value of the large equation to 1, we would get the same result as x match with a search mode parameter of search last to first. The power of these equations exists if you're not able to use x match or you need to return a value tied to an instance other than the first or last match. In this video, we briefly touched on x match, which is a newer version of the match function. Another great x function is xlookup, which is a more powerful version of vlookup or hlookup. Check out this video for a quick overview of the amazing xlookup function. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.